how to make a person in frames 5. Now, you might be wondering why I'm about to show you how to do this the hard way, because if you've used frames 4 or 5, or pretty much any program from Tech for Learning, you know that there is a library available that has a ton of characters already in it. These are some more simplistic characters, but you can go more complex as well, and they've got animal characters, human characters, you name it. Well, why make things from scratch if you've got all this clip art already ready to go? Well, because these characters are a little more difficult to modify. Sure, I can add this picture of a boy, and I can have him move around on the screen, but I can't make his legs move. I can't make him walk. He's got that expression stuck on his face. Now, I could put something right on top of it to mask it out, to change it that way, but... In some cases, it's a lot easier to make something from scratch and have full control over all the facial features, all the skin tones, everything. So that's why you would make something from scratch. And short answer would be, if I give you an assignment where you're required to make something from scratch, of course you're going to make something from scratch. But I'd rather you paid attention to the long answer because that's going to help you out with multiple projects, whether or not they're assigned to you. So let's get started. We'll be using primarily the shapes option under tools and I often make the body out of an oval now if I'm doing a portrait because I'm doing a medium shot let's say or a close-up well I don't need to have the full torso I can just have this oval here and have it go off the edge just a little bit and people will just assume the body continues down even if they can't see it even if it's not really there now, for everything I'm about to show you, a lot of these are guidelines. You can take this advice, you can throw it out. I'm using a lot of ovals. I'm going for a little more realism, not realism, but you know, closer to realism. You don't have to go that route. You could make the torso be a triangle or a diamond or you know, pick a shape. SpongeBob SquarePants, don't make SpongeBob SquarePants, he's copyrighted and trademarked, but SpongeBob SquarePants is a rectangular prism. So already there's a precedent you don't have to use the shapes that I'm using, not by a long shot. Okay, now my neck, I usually make the neck out of a triangle. Again, you don't have to do that. I like the fact that the sides taper a little bit, and our necks do taper a little bit if you look at them closely. If you right-click on a shape, you have an option of sending something backward or forward. This is already in the front, so I can't send it forward. But I'm going to send this behind the torso, so that looks a little better. Now, right now, you can see these black lines. I'm leaving them on so you can notice how I'm doing this a little better. I usually turn them off. If those black lines are distracting to you, then go over to where it says Stroke over here after you've clicked on the shape that you want to modify and you can click on that checkbox and suddenly the black line goes away. The shape is still there and you can still change the color of the shape but the black line is gone and a lot of people like that a lot more. Now for the head, again I'm using an oval. You don't have to. You could make it be any shape you wanted it to be. Let's move this right here. You might notice that if I'm resizing something I can use these squares on the corners that keeps it to scale if I'm not happy with the height or width in relation to the other thing I can use the ones on the sides or top or bottom like that if I want to rotate it I can click on this circle here and spin it around these are all options that you might want to play with while you're making your character keep in mind the width of the torso compared to the head if you're going for any semblance of realism you're going to want the torso to be wider than the head because, let's face it, your shoulders are wider than your head. If they weren't, you would have a hard time breathing because you wouldn't have space for your lungs. Now, eyes can be tricky if you try to put them right on the head. So I don't do that. I draw them over here in the empty space. Once I have them looking good over here, I'll shrink them down to the right size and move them over. So I have an oval. I'm going to change the color now before I forget. So that's going to be white. I'm going to turn off the stroke now before I forget. Or maybe I'll leave that on while I'm editing this and then turn it off right before I move it. And a pupil. And I could go fancy and color this or make pupil and iris and add a little lines. But I'm keeping this cartoon kind of simple. So I'm just going to make the eye black. 
and I could move this depending on how I want the person to look. I'm going to have them looking over this way. And once I'm done making the basic shape of the eye, I usually select all the parts and I group them together so I can move them all at once. So far as the program is now concerned, they are one shape. Now I'll turn off the stroke and shrink this down a little bit and move this over. And once I have one good eye, I duplicate it. I love this button right here. You hit that and anything you have selected it makes a copy of. And now I have two good eyes. There's no point in making two different eyes from scratch unless you want them to be completely different. There's no point in reinventing the wheel unless you have to. Now, for the mouth, I often will use an oval. Why would I do that? Well, because if I just use the pencil tool to draw a mouth in, I can't animate this very well. It's just a line. I can't make that open or anything. And also, that was pretty bad because I'm not that skilled with drawing with a mouse. But if I use an oval, I can use these teeny little squares. Not these big blue squares, but the teeny little ones. I can click on those. Those are called nodes. N-O-D-E-S. And I can pull them down. And now my person has an expression. And I could flip this over and make them sad but when I'm animating it I can have this go open and closed and they'll be talking but this is just a still so I'm just gonna leave it like that for now I am going to change the color because unless this person has swallowed a light bulb it's dark in their mouth I'm not worrying about teeth that'll be something for later nose I do tend to draw the nose with the pencil tool and because I'm not the best in the world with drawing with a mouse I will often have my fingers on the command Z. Well, if you're on a Mac, it's command Z. If you're on a PC, it's control Z. That's the undo command. You could also go up here to undo and click on that to undo it. And you keep drawing it. And if you don't like it, you undo it right away and try it again. You can go through 10 to 15 different noses before you get one that you think looks pretty good. Now, I kind of like that one. I don't like where it's positioned so I'm going to click on this little arrow over here and now I can move the nose around I could make it larger or smaller and you're gonna wanna make sure that when you're clicking on the nose and moving it around that your fill is turned off if you have the fill turned on you might not notice it to begin with but if you're going to change colors you're going to see you know, that doesn't look very good. So keep the fill turned off for that. Keep the stroke turned on. That black line is another stroke line. All right, now, ears. On an actual human being, ears extend from roughly around where your eye is to where the bottom of your nose is. Now there's a little variation for different types of genetics, but that's mostly how people are. So I'm going to make an oval that overlaps the head that goes from the eyes to the bottom of the nose, and that's going to look a little more realistic. Let's send that to the back, and maybe move that over a little bit. Okay, that looks a lot better. And again, once you have one good ear, you duplicate it, and now you have two good ears. There we go. And I could play around with a little more, maybe rotating it so it looks a little more flush with the head. But this is really nitpicking right now. Now I usually like having the stroke off when I am making characters. I like that look better. How you do it's up to you. I'm going to select everything and turn off the stroke now, except I don't want to turn off the stroke for the nose because it'll go away entirely. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the nose and now the nose is not selected. If you're holding down the shift key when you click to select something, if it's not selected it gets selected. If it is selected it gets unselected and anything else that's selected just stays the way it is. And now I'm just going to turn the stroke off on everything. I am going to change the fill color to a flesh tone. If you're doing a cartoon your fill color can be anything you want and you might have noticed suddenly my eyes are changing their fill color too. I don't want that. 
Command Z or Control Z if you're on a PC, and I need to deselect the other things I want to change. Don't want to change the colors for that would be the eyes and the mouth, and let's leave the shirt the way it is too. So now it's just the ears, head, and neck that would be changing colors. And on a cartoon, you can make them any color you want. You can go for some type of realism. You can go for off the wall. I haven't written any rubric that grades on making them realistic colors. So, you know, it's your cartoon. You're the one who's deciding how you're going to do it. Let's make the shirt blue. There we go. Now, hair is tricky. There are as many kinds of hair out there as there are ways to make hair. A lot of people just leave the person bald because they get intimidated by it. In my opinion, you should not use the pencil tool to draw on the hair. That is a common problem that a lot of people do even when drawing with pencil or pen where they try to draw every single strand of hair and it gets really frustrating because we know hair is made out of strands but that's not how we actually have our hair arranged. Think of the volume, think of the shape that the hair makes. Let's try it this way. I'm going to take this head and I'm going to duplicate the head. Now I have something that's the exact same size. I'm going to make it just slightly larger and I'm going to change it to black. Again, it's a cartoon. You could have it be another color if you wanted to. All right. Now I'm going to do something else with the nodes. If we zoom in here, now you might have noticed last time I clicked on one of these tiny little blue boxes that some arrows showed up. These arrows affect the curves in between. So if I click on this arrow and I pull it, it changes the curve like so. Now if I clicked on this square again with a double click, then I can move each side separate from the other side and you know this is something you might want to play around with once I think I like how the shape is I can right click on this and send it to the back now this person is not done because their entire front of their head is bald I'm not talking about bangs I'm talking about your hairline is roughly halfway between where your eyes and the top of your head go so it'd be roughly right around in here varies by person as I start to go bald my hairline is going to start creeping up that way, but it's not going to look like that ever. I'm going to copy the head again. I'm going to change the color to black again. If you want to copy an exact color, let's say I wasn't making it blue, let's say I was making it some shade of brown or red or whatever, I could actually click and drag over here and I could copy an existing color that I've used somewhere else in the artwork. I'm going to move this up here and now Let's make this just a little bit wider. There we go. I'm going to click on this bottom square, pull it up like this. And I can play around with this until I'm happy with how the bangs look. And there you go. A very simple person. Now, if I want to have more than one person in my movie, I don't have to draw the next one from scratch. I already made a person from scratch. I can take this entire person and copy them. I can take this entire frame this person's in. I can clone it. So now I have two frames down here, each with the same person in them. And one of them I'll leave the person like that. The other one I'll change them. Maybe I'll change the hair to something else. Maybe I'll change the skin tone to something else. Change the color of the shirt. Get rid of that nose, put in another nose. I have the basic underlying features of this person made. All I need to do is change it a little bit and I have an entirely different person without all the work of starting over from the beginning. Technology is made to make our lives easier. If it's making your life harder, somebody is doing something wrong. Don't let that somebody be you. All right, so that's basic steps on how to make a person. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.